Hi guys, uh, it's been a while since I've shown my face on uh, YouTube. Uh, okay, it was summer and I had a lot of things to do, but, well, I'm back. Um, as you might have seen if you follow my channel, and if you don't, now is the time to subscribe. <laughs> well, if you follow the channel you've seen, I got a drone uh, for my birthday. And, um, a uh, little DJI Spark and I've been flying it a bit and I've posted a few videos where you just see some drone footage with some uh, music playing and actually more people clicked on those than on my last VR video so I guess you like them. Uh, I kind of want to avoid doing the three uh, typical fresh drone owner videos let's call it that which you've been seen a lot on YouTube lately which is basically uh, unboxing, review, and uh, weird tips. Usually the same tips that two other people have already done. So yeah, I'm, I'm bored of those. I guess you are bored of those. And uh, if not, you'll, you'll find a ton, ton, ton of those on, on YouTube. So what I was thinking was, well, if you are a YouTuber or um, a hobbyist or whatever, a guy like me who just got the drone, you're maybe not from Germany, but you have a trip planned to Germany and you want to shoot a bit drone footage here while you're at it. Doesn't matter if that's for your YouTube channel or for your family album or for whatever. The um, thing is that we have a few laws here in Germany about drones. Actually, there is a new uh, one made and which got a place in last April. So um, there's a few things that you should know. And I figured that. I might be making a valuable video if I actually tell you guys a bit about the things that you need to know if you want to fly a drone in Germany. The um, first thing that let's let's start with about drone sizes because in Germany there's a difference in how much weight your drone has uh, on what it can do. Uh, generally, if your drone is below 250 grams. It will be seen as more of a toy which allows you to do more than in other cases. If it's above 250 gram, grams you need an, uh, well basically something similar to a license plate and you need a, a plate on the drone which is fire resistant and which cannot just fall off um, that shows your address. Uh, most people will, will use a small aluminium plate for that. You can order them for less than 10 euros. But yeah, you need one of those if your drone is above 250 grams. The DJI Spark, to give you a comparison, is 300 grams. So you need it for that one already. Um, then basically, generally, you can fly this drone. Uh, there's one more thing that you need, no matter what weight, even for the, for the little one, is you need an insurance. And by that I don't mean an insurance that pays you if the drone is lost, I mean one of those insurances that pay someone if your drone is causing him damage. If your drone falls down, crashes into a car, then uh, you want an insurance that pays for that. And actually in Germany there's a law that you have to have one of those insurances. Um, I'm going to link the insurance that I have down in the uh, in the description probably if you're not from germany you will not be able to get it because from what i remember it requires uh, an address in germany but i'm pretty sure that wherever you're living there is insurances that offer the service and um, even if you're not coming to germany even if you're just flying in your home country doesn't hurt to have such an insurance. They're not really expensive. Um, the one I got is like 100 something euros and it allows me to fly the drone uh, for hobby slash sports, uh, which is what most people need. And it also allows me to fly it for business because um, the way the German law is set up, if you use it for YouTube, then it's kind of using it for business even if you're not making money of it, because even if the video that's using the drone footage is not monetized, it is an instrument to larger the size of your channel on YouTube, and YouTube is a commercial thing itself. So 
it's not for the purpose of entertainment or sport. And only if it's for the purpose of entertainment and sport, um, you don't need the business or whatever you want to call it, insurance. So you should look for that when you do it. But I'm pretty sure that the insurance companies, wherever you will register, will know what to look for. Um, they might even offer my, as I said, mine is valid for both of it, so probably they offer something like that. Um, then some of those insurances are limited to a specific drone. Like when I got mine, it was limited to well, the first drone that I registered with it, which was my Spark. I recently got an email which says that they're now allowing up to five drones on those insurance, so I could get four more and register them. Um, but then basically everyone can fly or under my supervision can fly this drone. Which um, is maybe an option for you if you know someone in Germany, if you have a friend in Germany you want to do uh, some video and you don't have the insurance, you don't have your license plate, ask them to fly your friend's drone and uh, do it under their supervision. Um, all right, uh, so let's go to the next bigger size. Um, and there's a bit more things about the little ones, but let's go to the bigger size first. Uh, let's, let's get through with this differences first. Um, again, the insurance you need for all of them, the license plate, the address plating, basically, you need from 250 grams and more. And that's takeoff weight. It's not weight of the drone without the battery, it's not weight of the drone without the camera, it's takeoff weight. It's the weight that the drone, including everything attached to it, has on start. Now, the next one is two kilos. If your drone is more than two kilos, then you need uh, what they call a Kenntnis Nachweis. It's basically a paper that says that you know uh, about certain laws and about uh, certain rules and about meteorology and about aviation um, the absolute minimum that you need to fly a drone um, this paper this document you can obtain by doing a test in Germany um, there is currently two or three companies that offer the training course and the test and they just started last month so, um, if you have a drone that's more than two kilos, um, I'm going to, to, to name a few drones and, and give you an idea where they are at. Uh, if, you, if you have more than two kilos, you will need to do this test, which means you will have to do this here in Germany. You will have to come to Germany, you will have to take the course, you will have to do the test. I do not know if this test is available in English. It might not be. So yeah, that might actually be a problem. Uh, and then also if you're above above five kilos you need Besides having done the test and the document you will also need a, a takeoff permission um, I've not done this I Have read people say that currently there are no takeoff permissions given Except if you are a big business thing and that you have to pay for it. I don't know how much of that is true uh, from my understanding, you can also contact, contact the uh, Deutsche Flugsicherung, the DFS, that's the guys who are responsible for the German airspace uh, safety, and you can get a takeoff permission there. From what I understand, it's just a call, but I might be wrong about that. So, if you have a drone that's more than 5 kilos, which probably is a, lot, a very large drone, then yeah, you should look for getting in contact with them and, and figure this out. I'm not going to, I'm not able to tell you more about this. So, uh, at what drones are you looking? Um, if you have a Spark, you're in the uh, above 250 category. Um, if you have a DJI Mavic, if you have a DJI Phantom, you're likely to be below the two kilos, in, in this 250 to two kilos category. Um, now, if you have a, an, an Inspire, Inspire 1, Inspire 2, they're above two kilos. So, if you don't really, 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 really need to use one of those, you might want to use your Phantom in 
it's done. Because it's, it's just simpler. You don't have to do the test. You don't have to do all that jazz. Um, also, I I don't I don't know about the rates, but I think the insurances are cheaper for the lighter ones. But that's something you have to figure out. So I think that's most about the differences. There's one more thing. If your drone is below 250 grams, and only if it's below 250 grams, you are allowed to fly at FPV uh, under a height, height, under an altitude of 30 meters. Meaning as long as you're less than 30 meters and your drone is less than 250 grams, you can fly at FPV without a spotter. If you want to fly any drone above 250 grams or any drone um, higher than that FPV you will need a spotter. Um, in Germany you're only allowed to fly on site and FPV doesn't count as flying on site uh, which means you need a spotter and the spotter has to stand right next to you. You can't have the spotter stand two kilometers away from you and you control the drones on that two kilometers distance. The drone has to be in your visible range. So that's that's very important. If you if you want to do FPV racing, um, yeah, you might want to do that indoors because indoors is a completely different. All the stuff that I'm talking about is outdoors. It's all about what we have with the airspace here and stuff. If you want to do the stuff indoors, be my guest. You can do that. But if you want to do outdoor drone racing, uh, you have to make sure that uh, this, this stuff is really loud. Now, that said, let's move on to heights. Um, just well, with the 30 meters I already gave you one. Germany is uh, quite central in Europe, as you might know, and that has a quite restricted airspace. There's a lot of restrictions on the airspace, there's a lot of controlled airspace, and basically, they felt when they made the legislation about drones that this was not even enough a restriction for drones because there might still be people who do sports aviation and then like uh, ultralight planes and stuff like that or gliders they may, might still be in the same area as drones so they kind of decided to define uh, a maximum height for drones so drones in Germany are not allowed to fly higher than 100 meters without a special permission. So if you come to Germany, set the, the maximum altitude your drone can reach to 100 meters. Then uh, in controlled airspace, you are only allowed to fly up to 50 meters without a permission. If you're close to airports in a circle of one point, I think six kilometers, you're not allowed to fly at all. If you are close to a Bundesstraße, and that's the autobahn, and that's the, the bigger uh, cross-country roads, uh, all the ones that have a B at the start from the name, um, you need to have at least 100 meters distance from them on the sides. You know, uh, the same goes for Bundeswasserstraßen, meaning. Every, everywhere where you have ships going on rivers and stuff like that. Then uh, trains. I'm not talking the tram, talking okay, trains, like uh, big trains. Well, you have to be at least 100 meters from the um, rails for those. Uh, police stations, you have to be at least 100 meters from those. Uh, <laughs> you see where, the, where this is getting. There's a lot of uh, roads. Um, groups of people and they haven't really defined on how many people or on what area so groups of people you need to have a distance from of more than 100 meters on the sides um, you see this is a lot of lot of lot of extra routes um, then you cannot go to any nature preservation national parks stuff like that you have to keep at least a distance of 100 meters from those um, now, if you look at a normal map, or 
you, you, you won't be knowing where it's the next police station or anything. And you might say, well, DJI has some block... No. The, the, the app that DJI Go, for example, uh, is extremely bad about the zones where you cannot fly. It doesn't know about a lot of places where you cannot fly. And actually it gets a few places wrong where it tells you you can't fly where you can fly in Germany. So you cannot rely on the DJI Go app. Then I know a lot of you guys are using air maps. I've been using air maps as well. Screw that. Air maps is not reliable because air maps only has the uh, control zones. Uh, it doesn't have the police. It doesn't. Oh, I forgot one. Uh, power plants, uh, industrial stuff. You cannot fly over those 100 meter distance. And um, so. There is an app by the uh, DFS, the Deutsche Flugzeugung, the guys that are responsible for the safety of our airspace here in Germany. Um, they, they, they have thrown in with a company from Belgium that makes uh, apps and they, they have made an official app that is actually covering most of the stuff. Well, it is covering all the police stations, it's covering the government buildings, the, the, the Bundesstraßen, the Bundeswasserstraßen, the nature preservation stuff, the national parks, it's, it's, it's really covering all of this and you can set the height, you can set the um, the distance that you want to fly and it will tell you from where you're standing is it okay to launch or not. And it's working actually, actually quite well. The only thing that it's not doing well is uh, a few people have been able to actually click on it while on the uh, runway of an airport and it would say, well, it's safe to fly. Well, guess what? It's not. Not allowed to do that at all but if you're in that radius of an uh, airport you should know and you shouldn't fly anyways right so what does it not have well obviously it cannot tell you how many people are there so it won't help you with the is there too many people to fly and since this is not really well de defined by the law either well you kind of have to Wing it. Make sure that you can fly safely, uh, make sure that there is not too many people. I think they said as a rule of thumb 12, but they didn't say 12 on how many square meters or whatever. So just try to stay away, away from groups of people. Um, then you cannot fly at night at all. Um, well, technically you could fly if you have the correct lighting, which is the same lighting rules like for a plane, I believe. So you cannot, you can't do that. Probably. Now, um, there is one more thing in, in uh, our laws that I haven't mentioned yet about where you can fly. And this is a lot about privacy. You might know that in Germany, we value the privacy of ourselves and our neighbors and um, yeah, if your drone is able to record sound or video or transmit any of those, you need the permission of everyone living on a piece of land, on a, like, a, what do you call it in English? The, the piece of land that your house is standing on. If this, if, if this is a piece of land that a house is standing on where people are living in, then you have to perm have the permission of everyone who's living there to fly your drone over. Meaning, if there is if, if this is a building where no one is living in, you can fly over a building, no problem. If someone is living in that building, like um, well, a family, 20 families, you will need permission by them. You cannot just fly over a village or over a city, over a living areas that just won't work um, you can do that if your drone is, is, is a toy that doesn't have a camera doesn't record sound you can do that if it's below 250 grams as well if it does have a, a, a recording device if it does transmit sound just transmit video um, no matter what the weight is you can apply it over Places where people live. This, this 
that's something that the app cannot tell you either. So that's something where you need to spend a bit of time scouting. You have to find out, is this an office building? Is this a building where people are living? Is this a building where both is happening? And then you need to actually get the permission from everyone. And it's not enough to get the permission from the owner of the house. You need to get the permission from everyone who's living there. So if you want to fly over one of those houses, um, you might need to plan some extra time because, well, people might not be there or whatever. So, let me quickly think if I covered everything now. Well, probably I forgot something. But those are the most important rules. And if you follow those, if you have your insurance, if you fly only where the app tells you, you can fly. If you don't fly over people and if you look at the uh, living situation of people there and if you have the uh, the, the uh, license plate or the address plate uh, then you should be mostly safe. You, if you violate any of those it can be quite harsh punishments. So don't do that. Anyway, I hope uh, this video gave you a bit of an insight on what to expect if you want to fly a drone in Germany. Um, if you come here, if you fly a drone here, drop me a link in the comments. I would love to see a video. Uh, fly safe and well, like, subscribe, share and see you next time.